Good evening. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. If you notice, I always start this out with good evening. And the other day it was pointed out to me that it's not always evening when the show airs. So whatever your time is, hello and how are you? And we are very pleased that you came to join us again as we add more and more friends to the list of uh, the stations that they are airing. Um, I'm uh, very excited about today's shows because we've been trying to do this for some time and I never found anyone that was bold enough um, to tackle that. And if you remember Barbara McGuire, she was on quite often and she moved to Iowa and we haven't heard from her at all, Miss Barbara. And so uh, we have a new friend, her name is Serena, and uh, she came today to discuss Green Eyes, Wanderers, Shapeshifters, and Walk-Ins with us. And so enjoy. And now I'm going to introduce you to my guest, Miss Serena, how are you? Fine, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to talking about this and, and letting people see that there are things that are going on that are very normal to a certain set of people. That's right, very normal. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I usually remind the friends how we met. Do you remember how we met? I was reading, I read Celtic cards, and I was reading at the Ocean Shores Fair a couple of Memorial Days ago. Mm -hmm. And I think you were uh, videotaping. I was, yeah. Um, uh, the fair at Ocean Shores, that's part of the harmonic conversions. Mm -hmm. It is. That they have all around the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were, and I don't know exactly how we'd connected that way. You were, I probably wanted to know what you were doing or something. Mm -hmm. I'm that inquisitive. And then we began to talk and I had an article, um, which uh, I wrote. I bring some of the things I write when I go to fair so people have something to do. And mm -hmm. it was about um, being a walk-in and finding out all about it. And uh, you took it and you read it and mm -hmm. you took it home with you. I said, here, take this. And we decided to connect. And here's, it's over a year later and here we are. So that's how oh, it well. works. Yeah. That's right. Well, it wasn't time yet. It was. So to, today's the time. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, maybe we tackle it in the order in which we listed it. Okay. Meaning green eyes. And um, I sort of surprised you today because I have something here that I can share with the friends. Absolutely. Last year, um, if you remember, we took you to Colorado to Hotchkiss to a um, to a conference, and after that. Um, I did lectures at the UFO Institute of Colorado, and one of the people that um, came to see me at the UFO Institute uh, was a middle-aged man, maybe, mm. and he said, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with this, he said, but I was told that you needed this. And in essence, what had happened, um, there is a set of caves somewhere in the... Um, I, I forgot the location, somewhere in Colorado, and uh -huh. he went and he found some hieroglyphic type things. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, he, so he reported them, and he was told to stay out of that area. And in the meantime, what happened to him, his eyes changed. Now I'm gonna show you uh, a series of pictures of eyes here that um, you might find interesting. Now, originally, uh, originally, this man had brown eyes, and uh, let's see, we, have, we need a camera here for this eyeball. There it is, I'm gonna hold it like that. Uh, uh, originally, his eyes were brown, Yeah. and within several days, they started to change. It went from this to this. Then it changed again. Then it went to this. And eventually it went like that. So evidently something happened to his DNA uh, that we're gonna talk about here in a little while. And you, what you're holding there is a medical report in mm -hmm. reference to these eyes that I've just shown you. Mm -hmm. If you'd be nice enough to read that. I'd be glad to. I examined this gentleman on 42195. He was referred to my office for evaluation of abnormal pigmentation on his irises. He noticed yellowish pigmentation on the border of his irises beginning on 4295. He stated that this pigmentation has progressively increased over the last few weeks. On examination, his visual correct visual acuity was 20-30 in both eyes. 
slit lamp examination revealed rust-colored pigmentation along the iris border in both eyes. The remainder of the examination was within normal limits. Blood tests were performed to ru rule out high iron levels in his blood and were completely within normal. I cannot explain the sudden onset of this pigmentation. In itself, the pigmentation is not all that unusual in color or character. What is unusual is the sudden appearance of this coloration. As I stated, I cannot explain this phenomenon. phenomenon. Some photos were taken in my office. Sincerely, Andrew M. Chang, MD. Mm -hmm. A real doctor on our side. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes. Yes. <coughs> and so it is not unusual for DNA and even blood types to change. Well, I think that from all the things that I'm studying and reading, we are our DNAs are all changing. Uh, I don't know if it's just those of us who are aware of it, but I think everyone's is. So I know with myself, um, my eyes, have, when I was born, were almost black, brown, brown, and then they got more gold in them, and now they're getting hazel. And I'm hoping that ultimately they will just go green, because I think that's where they should ultimately become. So the eyes are definitely um, an important um, feature to let you know that you're, you're dealing with a wanderer or a walk-in. Do you that's think maybe right. we should take a minute and explain what they both of them are, and then we can talk about them extensively? We can, we can touch on that, and then I want to go into details later, mm -hmm. because uh, one of the reasons is the friends. We did a show called um, What a Star Seed Consists Of, and, and Eye Color was one, uh, exactly. one of those. Then we also did a show on Indigo Children, mm -hmm. and that comes in that same category. So just to refresh your memories. But go ahead and define that, and then we'll go. A quickie, just so that everybody knows what we're talking about. Wanderers are people who have incarnated on this planet at this time to help with the Earth changes. Mm -hmm. And a walk-in is simply someone who makes an agreement with another soul, and literally, it's a soul transfer. Mm -hmm. the, the one uh, who was there leaves, and the new soul comes in, finishes up his or her business, and then continues to do his or her work. Mm -hmm. It's really quite simple. That's that's right. Yeah. N now, green eyes or hazel eyes mm -hmm. is a basic. Um, is is almost uh, most people in in that category have either green or hazel eyes. It's a giveaway. It's a dead giveaway. It is. Mm -hmm. um, also, I have a. a um, a website that has a starseed quiz on it, mm -hmm. and um, we gave that on that show. Did you? Yes, we yeah. did. Yeah, and what they do is they add gray eyes to it. Mm -hmm. I have never paid attention to the gray eye thing because I, you know, and this is something that I just kind of came up with. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any idea of what I was doing, and I think that happens with so many of us. The more we awaken and the more we become aware, we just come up with these things. Mm -hmm. um, but. I have not noticed the gray eye, but, but I'm telling you, I mean, I can just sit there and look mm -hmm. at anybody, and especially if I'm reading their cards, mm -hmm. I can just go right to that and I know exactly what they are. Yeah, a lot of times when we say green eyes, uh, it, they hardly ever like frog green. Mm -mm. Yeah, and so when you have green eyes, sometimes they get a little hazel, mm -hmm. sometimes they look gray, mm -hmm. you know, because they change with lights and mood and mm -hmm. emotions and things like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, although I have tell, I must <coughs> tell you that I have, uh, I know this gal in, uh, she's up in Seattle somewhere, and I see her periodically. In fact, I just saw her at the Boeing Fair. Her eyes, I mean, she looks like an alien because her eyes are almost yellow green. Mm -hmm. It's the darndest thing. I mean, it's phenomenal. And this is a woman, which is, and this is another indication, who has absolutely the most outrageous body problems. You know, her liver doesn't want to work and her kidneys don't want to work. And that's another dead giveaway mm -hmm. of someone trying to occupy this dense body who mm -hmm. is used to a much lighter body. Right here. Yeah. Um, I'm preparing a, a show about sickle cell anemia. Uh, here, I'll do very shortly. And uh, so what I knew 20 years ago about sickle cell is no longer true because... So I did talk to the director of the Sickle Cell Anemia Foundation and from a physical point of view, they had noticed things like that also. So more and more, we mm -hmm. can really prove these, this one extra DNA strain that it just worked itself in there some kind of way. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. So you're saying that, that we're determining that the sickle cell anemia has something to do with ufology, wanderers mm, or something? Not exactly, but it goes all the way back to, um, to the tombs of Egypt. That's ah. how far back it goes. And at the time, that extra, that extra little um, uh, DNA strain was 
needed in order not to be so susceptible to malaria. So it serves a purpose. Uh -huh. Then of course, as people went other places, they took that they took that with them. No, what he did say was that that it is true that what they knew about um, hemoglobin before. And in the last few years, it's very different, and they, yeah. they're trying to figure out how that happened. And well, they so should we just ask all of us. We know. <laughs> That's what I told him, yeah. yeah. So he was just happy that somebody was going to revive that mm. whole subject again. Well, I think that, you know, uh, anybody who really understands what's mm -hmm. going on, and it isn't that, I mean, I just know this much. I only know the things that really pertain to me. You mm -hmm. probably know a lot more because you talk to so many guests, but these things are just just what we said before they're normal but more than that they're logical i'm a very mm -hmm. logical woman i don't do anything woo woo even though i do lots of woo woo things they're all things that make complete sense to mm -hmm. me and if indeed we are evolving and we are getting ready to shift into the next dimension then our bodies have to be getting ready That's right. we have to be waking up and we have to be recognizing each other so that mm -hmm. we know who with whom we can talk about the things that matter to us and the people that we need to really stay away from mm -hmm. Um, and the moral of the story is, green eyes is a, is where, mm -hmm. um, in fact, the book cover, when it was painted, the man gave me brown eyes. Of course, I had to change it because mm -hmm. the green eyes was such a big part where, um, it, where in my case, my grandmother recognized that and felt threatened and sold me. Wow. And, and so even lo a long time ago, throughout the generations, people have recognized star people. Oh, it's as, as simple as that. Absolutely, because, I mean, certainly there are many, many traditions, many things in the Bible that are talking about mm -hmm. star people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we simply have the patriarchy that comes in and takes away all of our uh, ability to imagine and use our creative sides. But surely, old wives' tales, those are true things. Exactly, uh, yeah. You yeah. know, sure. You take the Native Americans and, and most of the indigenous people. Absolutely. Yeah, it's totally normal. It's just a, about 30% of today's pop, uh, population that has has problems understanding that. And then it must be kind of sad. Uh, I remember when I was in uh, that other, you know, in that other frame of mind, it's so hard when you don't understand something and it, it becomes a worry to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know, that's very true because I have a friend who uh, uh, has a small child and, and she doesn't really understand the earth changes. She actually thinks that the planet's going to explode and if she thinks about it she, she gets frantic over her child and mm -hmm. I try to explain it's a consciousness shift mm -hmm. or you know it's a shift into, I mean there's so many different um, ideas about it. I don't know which one is right, but it, Mother Earth isn't going to just blow up. My goodness, no. take it easy. But it's just what you're mm -hmm. saying. Having that little bit of information without any kind of knowledge around it right. or someone to talk with about it is very frightening. Yeah. I think that's why people like us scare everybody if they, you know, I mean, I pretty well stay in my own self. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't talk about this, explain it. And mm -hmm. B, it frightens people. It, it, it really does. It does. And of course, the the hype on the millennium hype and now um, at the time it is taping uh, the planets it, this is uh, not the 5th of May yet and at worst what could happen it's parallel to 1940 whatever year they invaded um, Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. so there will be some maybe some conflicts you know but mm -hmm. nothing so drastic that oh, um, no. you know we this just, is a manifesting time mm -hmm. everybody out there boy you know if you've got anything you want to manifest do it Right now, exactly, because mm -hmm. it and, and I think you've got a window, if I understand it correctly, the week be, the week of, sort of the week before and the week after. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you can grab it all that time, but it's the time to do rituals and whatever it is, you know, each it, person it, does. It do. Yeah, and it it goes about three weeks. Uh, it takes three weeks for the plants to get back, you know, to the other. Now, I knew there was a, some yeah. uh, window on it there. It is. Well, one of the things when when people like Mercury, for instance, when Mercury goes retrograde, which means it's going to go the other way, mm -hmm. it doesn't stop on a dime, you know. Mm -mm. I mean, you, you're talking about planets here, so you have things leading up to it, mm -hmm. and then you have, you know, it takes a while to get back to normal. So, green eyes, uh, what needs to happen if you have any questions, uh, call us. Um, we, we do take phone calls during the times that the shows air, even though they are taped, you can call. Oh, okay. So the next one on our list was the shapeshifter. Hmm? And and you have a picture of a. Of I that. have a shapeshifting story. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I'll. Um, 
we we told you when we went to the Hopi Reservation how uh, we encountered shapeshifters there, but this is a little closer to home. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of a little doggy here. And this is how the story went. I was out of town, and um, three men had worked on my glass room that mm -hmm. I built onto my home. And because I wasn't home, they decided to sit on the porch and just wait for me. And each one of the men had a beer. So they had one beer. For them, that wasn't a lot of alcohol. And around the corner, at the end of the mobile home where I live, food, something. And they got very frightened. And because they were drinking, they didn't want to talk about it immediately, so they waited a few minutes. And then, like, it was like, I didn't see that, did you? <laughs> that type of thing. Well, shortly after that, a very religious person and her sister-in-law came around the other corner and they encountered the same huge being. And, of course, they started screaming. And so the gentleman, um, they said, well, what's the matter? And they, they said, well, something came around that corner and then that something turned into this, back into this little dog. Okay? Mm. That's only part of the story. Okay. About five, four or five months later, the owner of this dog took, he had another little poodle, took the dogs for a walk. This little one disappeared. Be of course, the, my friend was very upset. The coyote came back within maybe 10 or 15 feet and acknowledged uh, the owner's, you know, like, I, I'm here, don't worry about it, and just walked off, and the dog has never been seen since. My. So, to me, that's a, that's a real shape-shifting story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That so, is interesting. Yeah. I will tell you that um, while I have absolutely um, no first-hand, uh, no knowledge of other people who shape-shift, now this will sound a little strange, but I actually have strange the... Strange is <laughs> I know. I have always... Okay. You know, I'm a New Englander, and, that, and I know you don't know that, but w what that is, is that's, those are people who are very conservative, and, and um, so I tend to always, you know, try to look my best and stuff like that. Now, this is the weird part, and I've always done this. If I go out and I just kind of look awful and I see someone I know, I'm able to actually make myself invisible. Now, of course, I don't really become invisible, but I somehow can blend into the scenery, and someone who knows me can actually walk right by me and not recognize me. And I've done this a zillion times because every once in a while I don't want to look nice. I just want to schlep out and go to the store real quickly. That is fox medicine. Ah. Uh, so, uh, so when you when you shape shift in fox medicine, uh, people won't see you. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you go to a party and people want to sit on you. They say, "Oh, I didn't see you come in." <laughs> um, uh, there's a book. It's called. Uh, Animals speak. We've talked about it before. Um, I don't have a copy today, but you have whole chapters on that type of shape shifting mm -hmm. where you follow your animal totem. Yeah, that's interesting. That is um, actually I've, I have that. I think I have that website saved. I'm I'm becoming quite the computer person. I, I love books so desperately, mm -hmm. um, but you know you can absolutely get too many of them. Well, I don't really believe that, but you can get a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I begin to have websites saved, and there is a website for Animal Speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I never read about that. It's, I hadn't even thought about it about it until you started talking about this. And every household should have one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because no matter what you do, when you see a animal or mm -hmm. something, uh, it gives you a message. Yeah. And that's sometimes when people identify and blend with that animal, for instance, mm -hmm. then uh, they can sometimes appear like that to other people. Yeah. And uh, take on the qualities, and fox is invisible. That's cool, a, huh? that, yeah, that is terribly cool. I know. I, I was listening to Art Bell one night, and he was mm -hmm. he was doing doing a shapeshifter program. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy was becoming a chair. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. I believe everything. I give it all the mm -hmm. benefit of the doubt. But I know what I'm able to do, and I have always done it. And I don't even think about it. I just mm -hmm. do it. So who knows? Yeah. Um, the friends have seen me in places that I wasn't, or uh, two places at the same time, so it all just kind of oh, I know comes into that same category. And the more you understand that, um, uh, 
I tell you, who can see uh, when you shift or cats? Cats will definitely see when you make a shift of some kind because they act strange or they, they jump, you know, and they notice things like that. Well, you know, I just took a, this weekend, I took a uh, animal communication ah. class. I have cats. I know you mm -hmm. do as well, and I bet you this happens to you. Um, she said, well, we know that cats are really uh, high vibrational animals, very, yeah. very um, evolved spirits. And she said that when you travel sometimes, mm -hmm. And especially if your cat sleeps with you, sometimes you'll be aware that your cat comes and bounces on the bed because cats leave their bodies all the time. They do. Mm -hmm. And do you notice that with your kitty? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Miss E.T., uh, if you remember the kitty, sometimes she likes to come to the studio and lots of times she'll, she's our centerpiece. She'll sit <laughs> in a bowl to the whole program. <laughs> and, and yes, she does. She's very sensitive. Uh, when I do travel, she takes on the behavior of a dog. Uh, you know, guarding, guarding the copper, uh, that's the RV, mm -hmm. and um, she loves trucks, you know, and even now if you say, where's the truck, mm -hmm. uh, she'll, she acts just like a dog would, you know. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. I have a, we should do a cat show, because um, I have um, a, a new cat that, mm -hmm. uh, I, well, I've had him for two years, but that's new. I take in strays, and he does dog stuff. Like, when I come home, mm -hmm. he's outside to greet me, not like the other ones who are mm -hmm. inside and they're ready. He literally... And, and we sort of, I sort of tease about him, you know, and I kind of tease him about being a dog. I don't know if he was a dog in another lifetime, or we have some kind of a real strange bond. I had to, he had to stay in an apartment I was in for a month before I would, could move because these other people went and left him. Wonderful cat. They treated mm -hmm. him horribly. And he literally, I said, if you'll stay with me for a month, I'll take you with me, but you can't come in because I had house cats at the time. And he did, and we just bonded. And he is just a love, and I have to be honest with you, I think that he is, I don't know, goddess. I call it goddess. I mean, mm -hmm. really, a, an yeah. old, 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 old soul um, who's capable of anything. Um, cats and dogs shapeshift on a regular basis. We did tell you the story when we took you to the Hopi Reservation where Monica Vinesmith and I, we was, um, we was at Kim's Canyon. That was the, the very last place we could have stopped uh, before we went up into the mesas. And um, there was a circle of what I thought was dogs. Don't know where they came from, uh, about close to 30. And they sat there and then they howled and then they did other things. And I kept, then I thought they might have been coyotes or something else. But they kept going back and forth and I didn't know what they were. Hmm. So eventually, um, I woke up Monica and it was like they was howling at the moon and then they shifted back into dogs. And then later the Navajos told us they wasn't dogs at all. They were the Hopis. They came to see who we were and whether we was allowed to do what eventually we turned out to do. So now had we known that we might have been a little discerning. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I know. See, and you know what the thing I think that's so interesting, and I know that you do the same thing, is I never really let any of that kind of weird stuff bother me because I always exciting. figure, yeah, well, I think that too, but I always, I kind of figure I want to know what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. like what's the story on this, like, like this cat, well, actually all three of my cats, but this one cat, it's like, what caused this cat to understand me when I said, if you stay a month, you can go with me, and then what causes this, you know, why do these things happen? I think it's phenomenal, and I, I... I feel such sadness and such, um, I don't even know, it's just sadness for all those people who are asleep yeah. and don't, don't get it, you know, don't understand the joyful, wonderful things that are going on. Um, you know, I was telling you that I brought my little plant with me because mm -hmm. when I was packing up this morning, she said, I want to go, I want to go. Happens, I promise you mm -hmm. she said it. Uh, yeah, it happen, happens all the time. In fact, uh, this happened to me on the legal show. We did uh, a show on jury duty. And on my way out, I have these two brass chickens. And the chicken said, I want to go. <laughs> and I said, well, OK. So I put the chickens uh, in my bag, brought it, put them on the table. And it turned out that we needed it for that legal show because they were talking about a law when you steal a chicken and then so on and so on. Uh, you know, I don't want to go there. Yeah. But things to communicate. And when, when we are asleep, we exist. But now we live. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, even and then we even can go to the when we're sleeping. I travel all the time. I go yeah. visit friends. I do all kinds yeah. of f wonderful, fun things. I took a, a Reiki class, a part of a Reiki class once, and this woman said, "I'm going to come at night. I'm going to get all of you, and we're going to do all the you know mm -hmm. brain stuff, and then blah blah blah." Well, I want you to know she woke me up when she came. 
Uh -huh. And I said, and I can remember very clearly, I was in a hotel in New York at the Pennsylvania Hotel, and I sat up with a start, and then I went, oh, it's you. And I laid back down, and then my spirit went with her, and uh -huh. we did our class. I mean, the things that go on are phenomenal that are yeah. just, they go on. I mean, you know, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it, it's not unusual for some of the friends, and yeah, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, they'll come to the house, and they say, well, let me in. I want to see something where they have astral projected and left something, and they want to see if it's in the right place, you know. So yes. we, we do have, we have fun with that. Yeah. Now, the next one on our uh, list was wanderers. Now, I'm going to let you explain that. Okay. Um, wanderers. Um, first thing you have to think about is that um, whatever your personal belief is, we are really all souls or spirits or light beings or whatever you want to call us. And so it, it, if you really can kind of get yourself to really see the big picture, it doesn't make any sense that we only ever come to one place. Like, exactly. this is it. You know, mm -hmm. that's, there's no logic to that, and I'm a very logical woman. And wanderers are people who, or beings, who go around the galaxy that's right. and go to the planets that need help. Mm -hmm. And we are just born, we just are born to regular people. Now, I have a friend who's a Pleiadian, and she did tell me that my father is the uh, star person, or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, who, that, that I came through. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I can't explain that very clearly down into English. I don't quite know how. You know, he, it, my mother is like a, a regular person, and my a father is a star person, person mm -hmm. I guess is the best way. Um, and I look like my father. Um, and I also have his eye color, that changing eye color. Yeah, but that's... That's where that usually comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So wonders and time travelers are pretty much the same. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I explained that in detail in my book and what happened about my father. You know, so some of the friends are. And does your father have this lovely eye color that you have? That's where you got that? Uh, probably so. I'll be darned. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so um, wanderers come and uh, we all do some kind of. Um, spiritual work mm -hmm. like I have a day job mm -hmm. you know so that I have money coming in but then I do all kinds of wonderful things mm -hmm. on my own personal time and I didn't I wasn't always awake I had my first vision uh, when I was five and I've always been terribly intuitive uh, but I didn't know how to harness it exactly yeah. and um, I uh, just as things progressed I just became more and more aware that I was weird and uh, mm -hmm. That's just it. Bird is so good. The, yeah. yeah, oh, absolutely. I never, uh, and these are all traits. Um, I never belonged. Mm -hmm. I never, you know, it was always, I was always the odd man out. I, uh, even to this day, I don't have things in common with the other kind of people. I don't know how to have, I don't know how to talk about banality. I, I don't care right. who's the PTA mother. Now, that's a word I didn't understand, banality. Bana uh, what does that day mean? to day things. Okay. Day to day things Thank are just you. not interesting to me. Um, because I want to talk about, you know, all the fascinating things yeah. going on. And I've always, um, I, ha I am not a real uh, UFO fanatic, but what I am is someone who has always wanted to see a spaceship. I've always uh, thought uh, that I'd love to be taken up in a spaceship. Well, of course, now that I get it, I understand it. That's home. Mm -hmm. And that's why, I, but I've, I've never, you know, I've never been abducted or, well, who knows? Well, a lot of times when I go to sleep at night, I travel up to a ship. I know that because I can see the stars, but that's another thing. But anyway, I've always had this, gee, I wish I'd see a, 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 a UFO because I'd love to go up in one. Well, of course, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing that you'll find with wanderers is that we're very aware that we are not at home here. Um, almost everything that goes on here, the um, disrespect to people, uh, the... Um, uh, um, the way people treat each other, uh, the rules, the regs, all of these things to us are not normal. And that's, of course, because no matter where we come from, because we're more evolved, we, um, we don't really need all these rules. We just don't harm anybody. You know, we don't do uh, things like that. Yeah, now sometimes, uh, now, remind you, we're still talking about wanderers. Mm -hmm. Those are seeing people that are born like this. Mm -hmm. And then when, when we get to the walk -ins, that'll be a little different. Mm -hmm. So when you are born like that, sometimes, uh, because when you come to that tunnel or whatever, mm -hmm. you sort of lose a lot of your memory. 
And so it becomes a question of learning how to speak the language, how to deal with the food, mm -hmm. and things like that. So if that sounds pretty Star Trek to you, um, um, I would encourage you to watch that. I saw one the other day where all of a sudden there were two Enterprise, whatever, the mm -hmm. Voyager, there were two ships. Mm -hmm. And we know from timelines, because they are not linear, that only one matter can exist in one timeline. And so when, when the Voyager split like that, we had one reality here and a, an identical reality here. Mm -hmm. They had managed to communicate with one another. I saw that one. Every, we're all trekkers. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, but I haven't always been a trekker. It's uh -huh. just accidentally mm -hmm. I run into some of these. And then, then eventually they merged. And that's what a wanderer is. You can just and so you're always you searching live simultaneously. Yeah, you're always searching. You're always looking for what is wrong here. You know, wh why isn't this different? What you know, mm -hmm. you're always searching for why, it, because you just don't quite fit. And what are you here to do? And that's the other thing. There are a lot of wanderers who still are asleep because they can't right. figure out what they're supposed to be doing, and they are caught up in the big car, big house yep. uh, stuff. And they don't get it that those things are not even the least bit important. We found real patterns in age groups here. The oldest wanderer that I know is a grid worker. You met her. Her name is Electra Arn. She's 82. Wow. And she just hiked... Uh, Central uh, Australia. So you have some in the 80s, mm -hmm. and then they go to 67, hmm. and then they drop down to 57, and then 40 years, 27, 15, 12. Hmm. And after it, it, once under 12, they usually come here with their memory intact. Well, that is very true. The young mm -hmm. ones do know what's going yeah. on. I hadn't thought about that. I know there's a lot of boomers, the baby boomers, of which mm -hmm. I'm one. Lots and yeah. lots of us uh, who who are. And in, in my in my private practice, um, I see a lot of people who come in. To, they'll come in and like for weight control or for smoking. Right. They really want to talk about weird stuff, and they yeah. know it's a safe place to do it. Yeah. And you would be surprised. Well, you wouldn't, but people would be surprised yeah. how many people out there are really waking up with yeah. all the planetary alignments and all the shifts that are going on. They are waking up and they're trying to get a handle on what's going on and why am I different and, yeah. and I want answers and they do want answers. Yeah. And, and these are people of all races. They oh, are gosh. no boundaries. They, no, no, just, no. Um, they come from everywhere. Yeah. I think that's true and I, and I do think that um, I think that that whole that whole issue, it's interesting that you brought that up. I think that is so irrelevant on on so many other uh, dimensions and yeah. things, and I and I th and I, I don't necessarily believe in the whole. It's not that I don't believe in karma, but I don't believe karma is punishment. For example, exactly. I cannot have I children. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger and I started this philosophy, well, then I had to, I had to believe that I must have done some horrible thing to children, yeah. which is why, I, well, that's baloney. Yeah, I is. now know that I just have other work to do and, and I couldn't have the distraction mm -hmm. of the children. But, you know, I don't know exactly what the whole karma thing is with the races and stuff because you're right. We are all over the board. I mean, That's now it, that we have yeah. internet, I have cyber friends all over the world who are who are wanderers or walk-ins. That's exactly right. Okay, just the key word um, about walk-ins. Uh, we have talked about uh, Lapsang Rampa. Uh, we talk about his books sometimes. He is a he he was a Tibetan Lama mm -hmm. that um, got. He was horribly tortured by um, the Chinese, and his body had given out, so mm -hmm. he transmuted, transmutated. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyway, transmuted. right. He entered the body of an Englishman, uh, where they, the agreement had been made. The Englishman didn't want to be there anymore. Then he came into his, into his body. Well, along with that, he inherited the Englishman's wife, and they later adopted a daughter, and he wrote these wonderful books, um, 19 of them. Hmm. And so along with the Edgar Cayce era, mm -hmm. uh, T. Lapsing Vampa was about the most known author um, for what at that time they called the occult. Right. And so we have talked about that, we have explained that, and we have referred to, to the books. And. Um, but then you are also a walk-in, mm -hmm. and so now would you like to tell your story? Um, yes, well briefly, 
in uh, August 12, 1994, I completely did a turnaround. Now, if you read Scott Mandelkin's book, and he is a wanderer who has done a lot of research, he talks about these really, um, you know, some kind of earth-shattering uh -huh. thing. I have never in my life, and it kind of gets me aggravated, you know, all these people uh -huh. have these wonderful full epiphanies, and I just go through life and things happen to me and I just accept them and move on. So I didn't actually realize that I had a soul transfer. I did realize that everything about me was becoming different and that I had to make a big change in my life. I became, I stopped being the student and I became the teacher. Uh -huh. And I had a lot to finish up, uh, but I began moving forward as well. Well, and then I had a friend. I had a, a gal I was doing some counseling with in Oregon, and she's a Pleiadian. Uh, I'm sorry, she's an Ashtar commander. And she's the one who said, well, a couple of years ago, this happened. Uh -huh. And so I, I said, yeah, right. And uh, so she said, you go home, you think about it. And I went home, and it was like, oh, my gosh, I know exactly what day yeah. it was. August 12th, 1994. And you'll find that walk-ins, many times we celebrate two birthdays. I have another friend in Yelm whose name is Winslow Schlosser, uh -huh. who is a walk-in, and he celebrates both of his birthdays as well. Uh -huh. And so what we do is, so what we do is there's usually an agreement made. In my case, oh, the yeah. agreement was made yeah. before. Yeah. And uh, so this person did life for 46 uh, years or whatever it was, and then I came in. And I am much stronger than she is, and I'm much more outgoing than she is. Um, when she, uh, she would not be able to sit here and just talk to you. I lecture all the time. Mm -hmm. I write. I do all these things. She would not be able to do that, even though she did all the studying for it and got the certificates and the things that we need to go forth and do the work. Yeah. And, um, and that's actually all it is. And walk-ins are... Um, we know exactly what we're here to do. We're not like a wanderer who has to wake up. Exactly. Yeah. When you come in, your memories intact. It's Bingo. It's just like you're changing your clothes, and here you are. That's it. And we, we often talk about love, saying he was, he was this small Tibetan, ended up in an English body. Can you imagine how awkward that must have been for yeah. him for a long time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady, this lady's name is Joelle. Her, um, she wrote a book called The, um, the Walk-In. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bought it, I loved the cover. It was so colorful. It caught my eye. Yeah. And uh, so I met her, and I was really impressed with her. Uh, the other experience I had with that, my friend Gypsy Hurley, when she died, um, she was ill, and her heart stopped, and they brought her back. And then her heart stopped again, and they brought her back a second time. and. I got to spend about one week with her from the second time they brought her back till the actual passing, and she was not my friend anymore. And I asked her, I said, are you a walk-in? And she just smiled. And, uh, and here again, you could actually see it instead of saying, would you do me a favor? It was like, get a pen, write this, do this, do this, do this, you know. And so sometimes she is so noticeable. Mm -hmm. Um, now, this Joelle, uh, Joelle lady, she also remembered everything about the person whose body she had moved into. Do you remember? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. But, you know, I remember many of my past lives, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I mean, I've heard a lot of scary stuff about that, but I just hold things and it doesn't bother me. What is, what is true about it, though, is, is that while I remember it, it's, I don't feel like it's me if that makes any sense. It's oh, like, it, I remember all this, but like I can't imagine. Person. Yeah, it's another person, and I can't imagine that I would have allowed any of those things to happen because she was a very gentle soul. While I'm not, not gentle, but I'm much more aggressive and assertive. Mm -hmm. um, I have much more confidence, and that's because I already know what I have to do. I'm not guessing and waking up. Mm -hmm. You know, we bless her. Without her, I would not have had the education and the, and the experiences. Uh, but... Uh, her life, I remember every detail of it, but it's not, it's not mine. It's like I have a memory of someone else. Mm -hmm. Sprinkling up my nose going, does that make sense? No. I'm going to go somewhere else here for a minute. Uh, it just occurred to me now, uh, some of us, uh, I don't know in your case, but some of us had bouts with multiple personality disorder mm. because that's the closest thing they could be related to where mm -hmm. one, one day you're this person and you have those memories and 10 minutes later, you, you recall something totally Absolutely. different. And so I've often wondered if um, if they was to look into that a little closer, they wouldn't find that um, that is really true. Now, um, 
with multiple personality disorder, for instance, I do know your appearance, your appearance mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. um, there are times when you have, um, like myself, for instance, I, I'm as blind as a bat, mm -hmm. you know, and then there would be episodes where I had 20-20 vision. Wow. You know, um, there were days I couldn't speak English at all, and it was some other kind of language, and then you, you have all these memories, and so sometimes you just don't know how to put that together. So what would you recommend? Well, I will tell you, the only reason I have knowledge of that is, once again, Scott Mandelkin, which is the book mm -hmm. that I have, um, he was a Buddhist monk, and he is, uh, I don't want to say the wrong thing, he is a, like a clinical psychologist or mm -hmm. something like that, I can't remember exactly, but, and he studies this, mm -hmm. and what he says is exactly what you're saying. There are a whole bunch of people in the asylums or the mental hospitals. Oh, they're brilliant. Uh -huh. And there's nothing wrong with them, folks. They uh -huh. just don't fit our little black and white mold of, of what we need to be. And he talks about the, the personality disorders is what he talks That's about. Right. He says, it's just your point of view. And unfortunately, they are in a place with Western medicine that says you're yeah. nuts. Yeah. And indeed, no one is the least bit. There's yeah. no imbalance at all if we could just allow them to be who they need to be. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, keep in mind, we came here for a purpose. Exactly. You know? And I know, I know of one case, the person um, is in prison, and he does more work in prison, mm -hmm. and uh, he can't get out, no matter which way we go, and he can't get out. And he's finally come to the conclusion that that is his work that he has agreed, because he finds wanderers and, mm -hmm. and people that need to work on the inside, um, some of the institutions. So. People are just everywhere. Well, see, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And there is no, you know, we, it's a, it's very much of a, I don't know, is it a patriarchal thing, a Christian thing, this judgment? Mm -hmm. You know, this is wrong and that's right. I don't even remotely believe in that. I think we're all doing our stuff and there's nobody doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And how lovely to have someone in a place where everybody's wrong, yeah. you know? I mean, if we, if we really stop and think about it, you know, People who are people who have atrocities performed on them, kind of volunteered to have at this time to have it's, an experience. At, at this time, yeah. At this and time. so it's not mm -hmm. our place to go. This is wrong, and you're you're terrible. It's it's really not true, mm -hmm. but it's it's so esoteric that really you have to be in a spiritual place to understand that concept. That's another word, esoteric. Esoteric is just spiritual. Another word for spiritual. I know that when. Uh, uh, George Dukakis was running for president, and he said something like, "If if his wife Kitty were raped, he wouldn't want that person killed or put to death mm -hmm. or something." And and all the all the people who were asleep went, "What a horrible thing!" I understood it perfectly. Exactly. I feel the same way. I had a guest, uh, my very good friend uh, Monica Ryan Smith. She made a statement. She said, "You cannot be in judgment, in, in fear, and in judgment, and in love at the same time. So if you're judgmental, you can't love." Well, and, and, you, and, and the thing is, you know, we answer for ourselves, to ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's my belief. doesn't make it so, but that's how I believe. So what you do is just so irrelevant to me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and when you do something that impacts me, I now have choices. How am I going to react? So it really is all about the self. And being selfish is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's about those who are selfish, in other words, are worrying about themselves, will generally harm none because... Full circle here. That's how we how we started out. That we would uh, some of the laws we don't need. If you know how to conduct yourself, if you know who you are, what you came here for, that's it. What your purpose is, you're not going to harm the next person. That's so it. there's really no need for that. So so the more yep. we evolve, exactly, hmm? exactly. Yeah, that is true. I, I mean, I'm very much an anarchist. I think that there's. I think that there's no need for government, but that's because of the place I come from. Mm -hmm. People just do what they're supposed to do, you know? I mean, it's, it's a loving place, and um, I have a lot of friends who know their planet's name and all that. I haven't got a clue what it's called, because, you know, I never have the wonderful epiphanies, but mm -hmm. I do know that it's a place where nobody's hungry, nobody's out in the cold, mm -hmm. nobody's killing anybody, no one has to rob, because our needs are met, our needs are provided for. Now it's, I'm sure, a place where manifesting happens, although I manifest here all the time. When I need it, I make it. Um, it there was the Pleiades, is that what you told me? Pleiadians? Uh-huh. Your, your place of origin. I, oh, I don't know. My mind. Oh, you don't know. I don't okay, know. You don't. 
I know everybody else does, but I never know these things. Ne I have been there once, neither, but neither do I. But um, that's Vandolf good. Vandolf Winters. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I'm not. He Vandolf Winters is the gentleman that documented the Billy Meyer story from uh, from Switzerland mm -hmm. about the Palladian ships, and they have thousands of photographs and everything. And um, we've had some inserts, and Elena Smith I interviewed. Uh, Vandolf Winters uh, several times. In fact, she brought him to town a couple of times. Oh, yeah. And Randy is uh, just a really nice person. He has a book. It's called uh, the Palladian, the Palladian Connection. And there, in there, they explain some about the structure and you know of these these groups of beings. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose. Would you call him that? Well, yes. I, I actually have a friend um, who uh, lives around here, and I don't know if this is true, but she believes it, so I honor it, who um, is married to a Pleiadian who is hovering around here somewhere. Is that it's true? I don't know. Maybe it's the one at my house, because we've been having a lot of hovering at my house. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, I told you, like, I travel a lot. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of times, this, and I do it before I go to sleep, and I, somehow I intentionally do it. Um, sometimes when I go to sleep, instead of seeing all the colors or whatever, mm -hmm. when I'm falling asleep, all of a sudden I'll be very aware that I'm looking from a window, from a windshield window, out to the universe. You know how, like, when you mm -hmm. see Star Trek and it's, like, black with all the little planets? Mm -hmm. I very clearly see that, and I'm aware. I'm, I'm lucidly dreaming, if that's what you want to call mm -hmm. it, and I'm very aware, and I kind of get in that place of, like, okay, what is this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't really, I don't, I don't deny it. I don't, I don't know. I just let things happen, because I know I have a connection, but I don't ever have epiphanies. I don't, I don't know why. I was very selfish with this year um, about, in fact, I didn't re even report it to, to the UFO hotline, uh, I, and I should have, but I was selfish. I was coming out of the office depot, and uh, I got to the end of the parking lot, yeah. and here was a craft. Um, I don't know how tall it was. Wait, I up don't or know how, on the ground? Uh, well, I got in my car, I'm driving, and it's... It was below the clouds because it was very, very black clouds I'm there. I'm so jealous, yeah. Um, one of the ladies made, made reference to it. It appeared to have been round like this. Mm -hmm. But it was in, in deckers. There was four deckers like that. And so even though it was round, it was so lit up, it also appeared to be like that. And I chased it uh, from the parking lot at Fred Myers up to St. Martin's Pavilion where I couldn't go any further. And it was so bright where I could I could see the windows. Now, what happened to me from the time I got from the parking lot at Fred Myers there, because I'm sure there was a lot of traffic. I don't remember running red lights or anything, and I'm just talking, hey, hey, mm -hmm. I'm driving, so you know, I'm talking to it. It dematerialized. I stopped the car because I couldn't go any further. I got out and thought about it turned around, it was behind me, and it was gone. I'd never seen one of those before. Oh, see, and I'm desperate to see it, but I never see them. I don't know why. Just isn't my thing, I guess, this time around. I don't know. I'm, I'm fascinated by that. I mean, I have scads and scads of friends who have stories mm -hmm. like that, and uh, I'm just envious. <laughs> well, um... So, come on down, you know. <laughs> I think if you if you ever encounter your first one, uh, it is said that some people they are on frequencies where they just don't see them. Mm -hmm. um, so as you change your frequency, um, you know your body frequency, mm -hmm. maybe eventually. Or maybe they know I want to get on and get out of here, and so they're saying, no, 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 you have to stay. You're not done yet. Did you see uh, Independence Day? Um, let me see. Oh, yes, I did see that. Yeah, and when they came, they all went on top of this building, and they said, here I am, here I am. <laughs> Sad. Remember that part, Sam? <laughs> don't know what happened to these people, so we don't want to do that yeah. either. No, 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 I know that. Yeah. But I am, I am envious of everybody who's gotten to do that, because I just think it would be the coolest thing. But then here I have this night thing that I do. So who knows? Who really knows? I don't mm -hmm. know. And I just try to honor and yeah, accept so, who I am. So you'll see that green eyes wanderers, shapeshifters, and walkings, they're all pretty much the same thing. And sometimes they occur within one mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. and, yep. uh, I, have a, I have a friend in New Hampshire who never dies. She just keeps mm -hmm. continually transferring souls. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and 
I don't have any reason to doubt it, and she always knows. It's almost like the Dax character of, of Star mm -hmm. Trek. I mean, she, she knows all these lifetimes, and she chooses not to die. And every body that she takes, she's such an expansive soul that she destroys the body in, mm -hmm. I can't think, you know, it's always a diabetic or, you know, something that she, she's just such a big, big, big person. Although I notice that with the little ones, when I'm at fairs or anything like that and I see the little star seeds roaming around mm -hmm. or, or when I'm doing phone readings or anything like that and they have a child who's like bouncing off the walls, I always try to explain to them, this child, is this huge soul trying to be in this little tiny little body with body. all these rules. Mm -hmm. Don't do this and don't do that. Although I do find that, I do find also that usually their parents are more, their mothers anyway, yeah. uh, give them a lot of space because yeah. they get, somehow they've got the idea that this kid is different. They don't different. maybe know what it is, mm -hmm. but they do give them a lot of space and I prepare them for the fact that, and this is what happened with me. I have a, a very high IQ, I'm very intelligent, but I was a poor student. I don't think linearly, I see very big pictures and so for them to keep Same making here. me memorize mm -hmm. a history date, I, yeah. I just couldn't stay focused on it. And I really was like a C student yeah. because I'm not linear. I haven't got a linear bone in my body. I always see the big picture and I go, and then I kind of work down only that far. And that's as far down as I need to work. Yeah, so gee, we covered a whole lot of things. I'm hoping that uh, it was enlightening to some of the friends. Yeah. And if it wasn't, it, it was a good conversation. Absolutely. You know? And if I could say, if anybody, um, there are some websites that I would be glad to send to people mm -hmm. if they just pop over to my own website and email me. Yeah, we have listed that at the end of the show. Okay, and I would be glad to send some websites out because there's wonderful reading. And even if somebody just thinks they might be, yeah. you know, uh, Take the test, the Starseeds test, which you know about too. Mm -hmm. That's on the um, yeah, we, we gave that on one of the Stargate uh, website, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, take the test. I told, I met a, a guy from our radio program, mm -hmm. and I told, and I told him he listened, and I said, go and take this test, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, did you pass? He said, not really. I only got an 82 out of 100. I said, you're a Starseed. You're a Starseed. You yeah. know. Well, one of the things that I found interesting about their test about uh, how. I like violets, you know, mm -hmm. uh, flowers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's the scent or the color, and we were talking about how we relate to the same colors. Oh, yes, I'm a purple freak. My walls in my house are lilac and stuff. I have purple everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I've all, I don't know why. It's, I mean, purple is the healing color, but it's bigger than that. And I know it's bigger than that, but I, don't, I can't grab it to tell you what it is. But there's something important about purple to me, mm -hmm. and I have it everywhere. Yeah, I, I think different cultures put different importance um, put different importances on, on purple. Um, I like it. It's not my my favorite is orange. Wow. Yeah, so. That's so terribly outgoing and mm -hmm. bright and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I there are some things that I don't know but I don't care. Mm -hmm. And that's my purple thing. I don't have a clue but I mean my life is purple. Well if it makes you if it makes you comfortable. You and know, I resonate and, with it. And, Hey, this is the. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to holler. Hey, I oh, that's okay. You got an I, idea. I got all excited. Yeah. <laughs> what it is? Sometimes, it's even if we don't understand what's going on, and and how our life evolves, find solutions. Do what makes you comfortable. And Marlo Morgan said. When you are born, you are worthy of life. Now, Mala Morgan is, remind you, is the lady that traveled with the Aborigines. Uh -huh. And basically what that means, the fact that you were born is good enough. You don't owe any explanations to anybody. Well, I buy that 100%, because, boy, mm -hmm. I wouldn't explain myself. It, there is no need to. No. And sometimes, you know, we can't. Because especially those of us who have guides and all those people who are kind of moving us along, I mean, we talked beforehand, I mean, there are things here that we have talked about that needed to be said mm -hmm. and that perhaps we had no idea we were going to say because someone out there needs to hear we it. Needed that and if everything else fails, uh, going to therapy at one time was a luxury, now it's a normal thing. Mm -hmm. And so if you get real strange and people look at you, just say, well, that's okay. It's part of my therapy. <laughs> and that's really acceptable. I like that. That's good. Th that's acceptable. You yeah. Know? And so... Um, and I also, and I do hypnotherapy. And so and ah, I can take right, people, yeah. and I can take people on wonderful journeys mm -hmm. to... Uh, to go back to where they where they came from, or to experience anything that they need to about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of stuff that's in our unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. It's our 
it's our, you know, this is where Edgar Casey. it's sort of like our Akashic records are there. Every single thing since this soul began is right there in my, in my little brain. Yeah. And you just have to go get it. That's it. And if, you, I, if you notice the eye color changes, uh, tell somebody we are at the point now in this life where we are documenting these things to find explanations. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, do I have time to go anywhere else with this? I do. All right. Books, uh, you recommend this here? We are here, no they here? Um, no, it's uh, Being E.T. in America uh -huh. uh, by Scott Mandelkin. Uh -huh. the, it, it's, it, this is the book that's, that, that someone gave me that got me started. Uh -huh. I don't recommend it or not recommend it. You can go to his website, uh, but it's a, it's a good one. It gives you examples of other people um, and showing that people from all walks of life, you know, uh, doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, mm -hmm. I mean, this, this, these occurrences, wandering and walk-in, is, is, it comes with anyone. But it also, it give, it'll give you that thought that I'm not weird, I'm not different, what's going on. Probably the same is true of this book. Of if this she, book, yeah. Anything that makes you go, okay, wait, I'm okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I have a, a group. Because those of us who are different, we need to have a group. Everyone needs community. Right. And I am constantly searching for more and more people um, with whom I can talk about weird stuff, and yeah. to them it's normal. Yeah, so terrestrial, to remind you, terrestrial is, of, uh, is earthly, Extraterrestrial is non-earthly, and celestial is heavenly bodies and things like that. And so anything that is not bolted down to the earth is ET. <laughs> That's right. Terrestrial. That's mm -hmm. exactly correct. Uh, even angels, people say that uh, they're not of earthly origins. Well, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily do angels. I do. I, I think don't they're do so. Either. Don't you? Yeah, but I mean, I believe they're there. But I just don't do the angel thing. I think they're mm -hmm. wonderful and you know beings. enlightened, evolved beings. I, I look at them as light beings. I do too. And boy, if I don't call on them for help a lot, but I don't know the angel thing. Eh, wings. I don't know. Who knows? I see fairies. You know. So who they, knows? They have wings. So there you go. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Yeah, they are beings from other other places that are here for our this this no. Not disposal. Yeah, to our disposal. At our disposal, yeah. Time has come. We ran out. Um, oh you my goodness. have a nice week. And uh, thank you for coming. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, we'll see you next week. Bye. Uh -huh.